Okay, so hello and welcome to this session with Luminator Technology Group, who we are delighted to have as an event partner for the Transport Innovation Summit. I'm Craig Waters, the editor of Global Railway Review, and joining me now is uh, Jacob Magnusson, Senior Sales Director for Rail at the Illuminator Technology Group. And he has a presentation for us all about um, artificial intelligence for, for onboard CCTV systems, um, which is an innovative concept. And I'm sure you'll find his presentation really interesting. Afterwards, um, Jacob will spend some time answering some of your questions. Um, so if you want um, him to expand on anything um, or you have a pressing question to ask, please do use the, the questions tab, um, which you'll find on the platform that you're viewing. Um, so Jacob, that's all from me. Um, over to you, please. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Craig. And I will dive into the presentation straight off. So here we go. So welcome everybody to this presentation about uh, uh, the use of artificial intelligence for onboard CCTV systems. So the main point is what can we bring to the CCTV system when we start to use the analytics for artificial intelligence? So the key point in starting this technology was to go via the current train operators and ask what is actually the status of a typical CCTV system of today? So what we see today is that most of the CCTV systems that we have in action on the trains are actually only performing passive recording and there's no incident detection. So at the best, we get back and retrieve some footage by some report made by a passenger, by some staff, by a police incident, but it's not really something that is proactively reporting upfront that we actually have an incident right here, right now. Also, most systems are rarely supported by a remote live view to the CCTV. So that is the second level of functionality that is uh, much wanted today. And even though we record it, there's no active uh, real-time detection of graffiti dirt or vandalism on board the trains. Then we have some other, uh, what you can say is um, either optical sensor or physical sensor driven system, which is passenger counting system, passenger load and seat occupancy systems. So uh, what is uh, the general description of those systems today is that they are dependent on individual counting centers at all doors. So everywhere where passengers are passing a door entrance, either from platform to train or from one car to the other car or from one section to another section in the train, we are dependent on having individual sensors. And what we also face of issues with passenger count is what the industry called accumulated accuracy. So if we have uh, a very high percentage of accuracy per count per station, then the next station has the same offset in numbers and that gets accumulated. So actually when we get to the terminal station, then we can face that we are quite off with what number of passengers are actually on the train according to what the system stipulated uh, on the traveling. Uh, also, many trains today has no uh, active passenger load detection. So many trains uh, today depend on using weight sensors to try and determine how many people are actually on the individual carriage. Uh, the key issue we face today is uh, in relation to social distancing and COVID-19, where we restrict the number of passengers that we have per car. And in here, the weight center is quite inaccurate because it doesn't give any picture of how passengers are actually distributed within the local car. It only gives the load level of the car. And when we get to the more long distance uh, oriented trains into city trains typically, and if we want to detect individual seats being occupied or not, then we have uh, in the past been dependent on having separate seat centers, either uh, capacitive seat centers in the seat or optical centers 
above each individual seed. So all of this uh, from the CCTV system, uh, passenger count, passenger load and seat occupancy has output some wishes from the rail industry. Uh, what if, and then comes, uh, we could have an automated social distance with an actual monitoring of where people are sitting or standing and combined with the incident detection. I will get back to what I mean by incident detection. That we also have an active passenger load status and also important for many trains, what is the luggage load? Many trains suffer from having insufficient luggage space. So what if we could actually detect that uh, this car is full by luggage, but if you go to the next car, then you can actually find that uh, luggage shelf or luggage racks that has a vacant space for luggage. And especially for the intercity trains, what if we could uh, have a seat occupancy detection without the need for individual seat sensors? And going onwards, passenger counting without the need for multiple door sensors and a higher accumulated accuracy. And then finally, having an automatic detection of graffiti, dirt, and vandalism detection. The, the key point where, we, if we talk about artificial intelligence in general, so it is to turn something that was a passive into an automated uh, human or object observation. Uh, as it becomes a real time here and now uh, reporting system, then it can turn into an increased service for customers or operators. Customers can here be either the, the transit authority, the passenger itself, or whoever is part of operating the train. We provide a lot of uh, more statistics, uh, accurate and in real time. And we make sure that we have no personal data is collected meaning that we comply to all the data protection regulations. It, as we use machine learning in artificial uh, intelligence, then it is a self-sufficient system. We do not need to educate the system. We can impact the functionality of the system, but the system drives itself and optimizes over time the functionality. It's also energy efficient because we install a lot less units, electrical units per train, and therefore it's also a space saving system. We have, we see that we have quite a low capex investment uh, for equipment that needs to go on board the train because we combine multiple functions within one system and thereby in fact substitute uh, different subsystems by one integrated solution. And we always make sure that what is reported are uh, determined by position by the GPS location. And we transmit by real time cloud based data, either using Wi Fi, 4G, 5G, as applicable to the, uh, uh, the operating area. And then uh, present a system that is certified according to the passenger account regulations and uh, for the uh, requirements for software development uh, according to rail standards. So I will start to go into the different uh, subsections of what can be offered through this uh, uh, added uh, functionality to CCTV system. So what we offer here in social distance and incident detection is uh, an anonymous social distance measurement of passengers. So we actually go actively to measure, I will get to the next slide on this. Uh, we do an automatic detection of dangerous or emergency situations, automatic emergency call initiation possible as we are real-time cloud-based linked, we can actually uh, perform a see it, say it, sort it type of uh, announcement to uh, operator control tower or transport police what is the appropriate authority on this. Uh, and we will also uh, provide to the CCTV recording system a specific bookmark that an incident has taken place so that the CCTV recording 
knows exactly what is the time, the position where this incident was happening. When we talk about social distance monitoring, which is active down to individual seat level. So what you see in the picture is some passengers distributed on a vehicle. That is the output in, in image you see in the lower left hand corner, where you see the red marks are where passengers are actually seated and the green marks are where there are vacant, vacant seats. However, if you apply the social distance regulation and put that grid to the vehicle, then within that specific camera field of view, you only observe the two seats are in fact available what in the image is in the lower uh, right hand corner. So we can actually apply what is today or this week or next month specific social distance requirements by attaching a grid with the layout of each vehicle to the system. And then the system will automatically generate what is the vacant space for sitting. When we talk about incident detection, then it is to detect any uh, physical movement of passengers that is outside the normal. So it can either be a fight, or it could also be the, a case of illness. If we see a passenger lying on the floor, we can raise an alarm that we have an emergency situation. We can also, uh, even if there's a full empty vehicle, raise that emergency call uh, automatically. We do not need other passengers to actually react and press any call for aid button. We detect through the camera system that this is an out of the ordinary situation. And we can, uh, in this, we can also open for live stream of uh, camera view so that you from remote place can actually see into the car of what is going on following this incident detection. And thereby also automatically route to police if it is a real fight situation like is going on here on this, these pictures. When we go to passenger load and luggage load, then we need to look at that passenger load is distinct different from passenger count. Passenger load is how you are actually seated or standing when the train is in motion. So here we want to detect if a seat is occupied by a passenger and we count the number of passengers in that area. We also do a luggage load detection, what is shown here with the back uh, circled in, in green, oh, uh, sorry, in yellow. So that we actually detect how high is the actual car load. And this can be expressed in a dashboard where we output the data car by car and see the distribution of load uh, within the train. The, the key point is obviously that we want a homogeneous uh, loaded train so that we don't have the usual uh, crowd in the front of the train and with lots of vacant space in the middle of the train. And not only this, we can also provide the statistics, how many are actually on board the train traveling. This can be used uh, for integration and output to the onboard uh, PIS system, uh, so you, that you can see on the screens, what is the passenger load for local car or the following car as appropriate for the output image on the train. It is also, as we are real time and we are cloud-based, then present the uh, image of the uh, train load to the CIS display uh, solutions on the platform so that passengers can um, place themselves on the optimum spot to get on the train where there are vacant places. Uh, this is key to optimize the passenger load in where we have very long trains, 10 car, 12 car trains. And it very important also in rush hour is that it shortens the ingress and egress time of the train. Obviously it is a, a key that we can interface with the operator website so that the output of the train load can go uh, to your mobile device uh, your computer. 
And if we go to the intercity type of trains that we go to, what is the individual seat occupancy? Now, what is really interesting here about seat occupancy, if you are sitting on an intercity train, when is a seat in, in, in reality free? So is it free as soon as you stand up and go to a restroom uh, break or you go to the cafe bar to buy a drink? Or, and then your seat is then uh, pre-booked by someone else when you try to return to your seat? Or can you actually set up the system that it detects that you has, as an object have moved outside your seat and is still on the train and therefore we should not report that seat as vacant until you have returned or we can uh, diagnose that you have actually taken another seat somewhere else in the train. So it's not only to do the actual in-seat detection, it's also to perform the analytics, what goes on in the movement between passengers while the travel is ongoing. Obviously, uh, the key advantage here is that we have a very much less installation per car uh, because we only use a few CCTV cameras per car rather than having individual sensors at all seats. The solution here also monitors the standing area. So it's not only restricted to what are actually seated passengers, it also observes the number of standing people on the train. So passenger count is very different from passenger load because passenger count only takes place when the train has the dwell time at station and doors are open. So this is where we count the number of passengers going in and out of the train. We do not perform passenger count when it is uh, the train is moving, then it is a passenger load. It is a count of passengers, but it is a passenger load detection. Here, the, the key purpose is to determine how many are actually going on and off at that speci specific train station. Here, one uh, typical uh, installation is that we have one 360 degree camera per vestibule area to detect that a door open on either side uh, have the uh, onboard, the boarding or disembarking passengers. So how does this analytics actually work? What we do is that we take what is normally a video image of a person and transform that into an object detection. This means that even though it is anonymously performed and being GPDR compliant, then we are actually able to trace the movement of a specific passenger. We also do object detection, so we can actually see how many bicycles are parked in the bicycle area of a commuter train or how much luggage is in the individual car. The key point of what we do is that there's no personal data stored as part of these systems. Even though it's an integrated part of CCTV, then the actual artificial intelligence part is without personal data. We do not need to perform the manual counting. And why is it that we get more accurate uh, and we avoid the accumulated counting errors? And I will go back. So at each station, we have, let's say, a 98% accuracy per count. But as soon as the doors are closed and the train is starting to move, then we go back to this type of analytics where we actually monitor how many passengers are on the train. So we are always able to reset or recalculate in the system what is the actual load on the train and thereby we get a better overall uh, accuracy in how many passengers have actually traveled these train during the day. As we are able to follow the individual people, then we are also able to determine when a passenger gets on board the train and from how many trains that specific passenger has traveled. 
And we can also monitor what is this uh, survey uh, of each seat occupancy throughout the traveling. What we need in addition to a traditional CCTV system is basically we are dependent on the CCTV camera. So we use either existing cameras or new CCTV cameras that you insert. It can be analog cameras, it can be IP based cameras, and then a dedicated CPU that does the uh, and that hosts and performs the artificial intelligence analytics. Then there's an output media, which is typically on the wayside, where we transmit the data. So what is the data process here? <coughs> Sorry. The key thing is that in step A, we, we are here in the CCTV world. So we look at a CCTV video image, but we do it in a read only mode. Then we perform an actual analytics as step B, where we transform the video image into an anonymous uh, metadata that we can use for our mathematical operation. Then in step C and step C, step, step Charlie or Delta is where we transfer the actual data. Either we can store the data on the train or we push the data real time to the wayside. And when we look at step B in specific, then what starts as a normal CCTV image in the upper uh, right hand corner, if you look the process, how we convert the image, then the actual output metadata looks like white noise at the bottom of right hand corner. And we only have the snapshot of the actual video for 100 milliseconds, then it is irrevocably deleted. So we do not keep any data that has the form of CCTV. It only looks like the white noise in the bottom of this page. Finally, what we also do is that we are able to detect that anything on the train looks outside the ordinary. I have taken here quite a bad example of multiple layers of uh, graffiti vandalism that we are able to detect individually because the either the color, the shape, uh, whatever sticks out that is outside the normal image of the CCTV camera. Here, it uh, allows us to raise automatically the alarm, the position of the train, the actual damage. We combine it with an actual video recording and uh, we can notify police, they can take actions immediately by an automatically raised event. This was actually the uh, presentation. So thank you very much for listening in. And now I'm ready for the question section. Great, thank you very much, um, Jacob. A really great insight there. Um, I'm, I'm aware of time, so um, let's um, move straight on to some questions. We've had some um, through from the audience. Um, but let's start off with um, one here. Um, where has your uh, technology been accepted? So um, perhaps you can explain a little bit more about um, where, where your technology is being used, perhaps some um, real life um, case examples, perhaps? Yeah, so uh, where we started off was in Germany. So we started off with Deutsche Bahn and especially also with BVG in Berlin for both bus and rail. And in the UK, what we are just contracted for is the huge Pendolino fleet. So on the Pendolino fleet, we go for passenger count, we go seat occupancy, and we go passenger load. Uh, what I can say in particular for Pendolino fleet is an almost 600 car huge fleet. And rather than installing 34,000 34, individual seat sensors, we are installing just over 2,000 cameras to do individual seats occupancy. So there's a huge D scope of electronics needed to do the same and more functionality than the traditional systems. And it is very much talking into what is the aspiration of uh, Vanti being the operator that they want to present not only the 
passive recording of a seat occupancy, how do you convert that the booking that you have to perform the day before today becomes a real time booking. You can actually stand on the platform and book your seat in the, in the future only five minutes before, before departure because you get an online detection. Then obviously we need to protect the individual seat occupancy as explained in the presentation. So there's a lot of analytics, not only the detection on or off that needs to be performed. Okay, and so um, are there any issues to consider um, with regards to privacy concerns for passengers? Um, for, for it, privacy, no, this is the key point. The, the system is fully G GDPR compliant. It is fully certified according to the data protection laws of Europe. Uh, it is very much what we have seen here. Uh, we break down the, what is a, starting as a video analytics to be a metadata based on almost white noise type of look. And everything that started as a video image is irrevocably deleted after 100 milliseconds. Okay, great. And um, let's take another question here. So um, somebody's asking, what is the smallest size um, transit agency that you have been working with? And do you maintain um, an ongoing site presence um, with your customers? Yeah, so uh, for transit agency, we, we obviously deal with uh, what is well known in the UK as individual operators, but there's no real uh, limit the key point being what is the infrastructure IT setup? If that is in place to actually support the connection to go live with that specific, specific fleet of trains, then it is something to be set up per fleet. It is not uh, the size of a transit authority that determines if this solution is suitable or not. Okay, um, so let's take a look at another question. Um, somebody asks, uh, would um, would you say the balance is still in favour of your system um, being used if um, a client only wishes to have just one of the functionalities um, that you have to offer? So perhaps can your um, can your solutions be be tailored accordingly to to different demands? Yes, absolutely. The the key point: if you already have an onboard CCTV system, then what we can utilise with the existing CCTV system without replacing any of the parts from current CCTV system is to bring on passenger load, incident detection, uh, all of that kind of analytics that is not dedicated passenger count. Passenger count has a specific requirement where we need a camera uh, centrally placed in vestibule to have the sufficient level of accuracy in the counting. But you, can, you could also uh, just add in the two extra cameras uh, or or what is the number of vestibules per car, and then you can combine it with the uh, onboard CCTV system. The cameras that I use for uh, analytics can, um, there are multiple streams that you can select typically from each IP camera so that you can uh, select one profile for the analytics and a second profile for the actual CCTV recording. And therefore I use one camera with multiple purpose. If I go for the analog cameras, then we make a simple Y split of the actual cabling so that uh, the existing CCV recorder can continue to record based on a direct feed, but I split the signal into a separate controller that will perform the analytics independent of the CCV recorder. So it can both be an add-on or replacement or stepwise implementation freely as per the need of the uh, individual operator. Okay, great. And um, you, know, you explained um, that you perform identification of, of each individual person. Um, can you explain a little bit more whether you actually, um, for, for luggage, whether you identify individual pieces of luggage? Could you yes. explain a little bit more? Yeah, so the luggage can be determined into uh, group sizes. Uh, in Germany, there are specific regulations that if you bring your dog and your dog is below a certain size, then you are free to bring the dog on board. But if the dog goes beyond certain size, then you must pay an extra ticket. So we are actually able to determine the luggage size depending on the size of the dog. 
Okay. So we go to that detail level. So it's really <laughs> much about uh, detecting uh, also what is very important, uh, what could be a luggage load can become uh, an incident detection. If the luggage is still there after reaching the terminal station, then there shouldn't be any luggage left in the train. Then the system will uh, recognize that uh, some luggage has been left behind and then becomes a threat and must be examined by uh, relevant staff because the train cannot go in next service with uh, leftover luggage. So the, it is a dual uh, concept here again. Great. And I think we've got time for just one um, last question. Um, so with regards to, you know, implementing all these new technologies and these um, innovative solutions, what would you say um, to anyone who would perhaps be a little bit sceptical um, about these developments um, and anyone who thinks perhaps, um, is this actually a, a reality going forward? Yeah, the, the key thing for me is that this is an add-on to existing system. We're not encouraging uh, any customers to withdraw the current systems. So that is analytics that we top up the current functionality. It's not a replacement of functionality. So we still continue to do the normal system recording. The key point is to turn what is what's, what was a passive recording system also to become an analytical system that can report real time with the combination of the original CCTV system. Excellent. Well, thank you. Um, unfortunately, that is all the time we have uh, for today. Jacob, thanks so much um, for, for joining me today. Um, excellent presentation. So thank you. Thank you. And just a, a quick message to the audience. Um, please do check out the, the sponsors and exhibitors page um, on the platform where you can find out more um, about Luminator Technology Group um, and to also connect with their team. So make sure you do that. Okay. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. And goodbye. Thank you, Greg. Thank you.